greeting saints of God. We greet you Lord in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. We are back again. We are back again. This is another Wednesday that the Lord has allowed you to meet you and me to be alive. We want to give him all the glory and all the honor for the life that he has given us. Hallelujah. We are among the living. We are rejoicing in him for he is a good God. Hallelujah. This is day number 47. Day number 47 and the program is a day of the Lord. We have moved saints of God from day 1 to day 47. Day number 47, and the program is the day of the Lord. We welcome you. Saints of God, this is Destiny of Christians, International Ministry, coming all the way from Douglasville, USA, bringing you the program, the day of the Lord, and today is day number 7. We welcome from wherever you are tuned in. Those in Kenya, we want to say thank you so much. Those who are tuned from uh, anywhere else, we want to welcome you and say thank you for tuning in. And people from Good Morning Africa, we want to say thank you, thank you, thank you so much. And those who write us and tell us about how they are getting blessed or give us their testimony, we want to say thank you. And those who help this ministry to do, to go on and do what the Lord has called us to do, we want to say thank you and God bless you. Hallelujah. So we are back again, saints of God, to study the word of God together. And once again, the program is the day of the Lord. And the topic today is the death of the two witnesses. Remember, we've been studying about the two witnesses, who they are. We debated about that. And the, the conclusion was that nobody knows the name, but they are chosen by God to do the work that the Lord will choose them to do at that time. So today, we continue with the death of the two witnesses. And the teacher is ready to embark on that. If you missed any program, if you missed any teaching, you can go back to our YouTube, you can go back to our Facebook, and you can recap, and you can be, you can be blessed, and you can, re, you can see where you missed, and you'll be blessed together with us. Hallelujah. Once again, we have the books here. I'm not tired of telling you about the books because they're blessing people. This is the first book, Repentance and Faith. This is a book that teaches you how, when you repented, how you repented, what it means to repent, and then you walk by faith after that. This is a book, and this is a book, Baptism, Baptisms. This is a book for the ones that want to be baptized. Those who have been asking whether they can be immersed in water or sprinkled in water, this is a book you should read. And maybe if you are baptized when you are young and you do not understand anything about baptism, this is a book to get hold of. Read and see what the, what, what the Word of God says about baptism. As I told you on Sunday, we had to baptize some people, Sunday but one, that read the book and they wanted to be baptized. So we thank God for what he's doing through that book. So get yourself a copy. You can get it from Amazon. You can get it from Barnes and Noble. Hallelujah. It will bless your heart. It will teach and open your eyes concerning repentance and faith and concerning the baptisms. So once again, we are ready to hear what the teacher has to, to, to tell us and what the Spirit of the Lord will reveal today concerning the two witnesses and the death of the two witnesses. I want to also say thank you. I cannot forget the people who come to set up the studio. Thank you, thank you, thank you. God bless you so much for the time you take to come on the him who will reward you. Hallelujah. So let's go before the Lord and welcome the teacher so that he can continue with where he left. And then we shall all be settled. Get yourself a Bible. Sit comfortably. Invite a friend and maybe share this program after it is over so that another person can be blessed. So let's go before the Lord and invite the Holy Spirit. And as always say, we can do nothing without the help of the Holy Spirit. That's why we always welcome the Holy Spirit and ask him to empower us, to anoint us, to give us understanding, revelation, and also to give us a calm mind that is able to sit down and understand and a heart that is able to receive. That is the work of the Holy Spirit. So let's go before saints of God and go before the Lord and ask the Holy Spirit to lead and guide us even as we begin this program tonight. Heavenly Father, we are so grateful that you have given us another opportunity a day like today. We are thankful, Lord, that you are among the living. Thank you for the breath of life that you have given us. Thank you, Father, because we walk in divine health. And thank you for every provision that you have released along the way. Lord, we are so grateful. Saints of God, we come before you, Lord, with those who are tuned in and those who will tune there after this program is recorded. Father, we want to come before you. We want to pray, Lord God Almighty, that you give us a mind that is settled in you. Open our understanding, Lord, that you may receive your word. And when we receive, that you may do us of that word. Father, we also come before you with the saints of God to repent of every sin that you have committed. For we know, Lord, that we grieve the Holy Spirit in many ways. We ask you to forgive us 
and to wash us with the blood that was shed on the cross for us and to create in us pure hearts that are acceptable before you, my Lord and my Redeemer. So when the word will come, we'll find a, a clean heart and a fertile soil where that word will be able to mature and grow. Heavenly Father, I want to lift those who are tuned in now and those who will tune thereafter that the anointing you are releasing in this place will touch each one of us at our point of need. I want to lift up the teacher, your servant, as he comes. Heavenly Father, I want to confess without the help of the Holy Spirit, he cannot teach, he cannot speak, he cannot utter any word. But we thank you because of the work of the Holy Spirit. We pray, Lord, that you give him strength, you rejuvenate him inside out, you give him wisdom, understanding, and revelation that come from you. When he stands on this altar, Father, may we be able to hear the voice of the Spirit of God speaking unto us and bringing the word with the truth and, and purity, a word with the power, so that when we listen to that word, my Father, our lives will never be the same. So, Heavenly Father, we also take authority. We come against every work of the enemy, every demon sent to harass us, every demon sent to harass the people of God. We bind and reject in the mighty name of Jesus. And Father, we all hide ourselves under the blood of Jesus, where the devil cannot find us. We thank you tonight, my Father, because we know when you gather your people, there is always a reason, and the reason is to bless us. So, Heavenly Father, partake those blessings tonight. They are ours with our children and their children in the mighty name of Jesus. It's my prayer, my Father, that none of us will remain the same, but let your spirit minister to us. Those who desire healing, my Father, we speak a word of healing in the mighty name of Jesus. Those who desire breakthrough in one or another, we speak an anointing of breakthrough in the mighty name of Jesus. Those who need to be comforted, holy comforter, reach them at their point of need tonight in the mighty name of Jesus. We thank you, Father, because we know that the work of the Holy Spirit shall be accomplished because there is no one that you sent that comes back to you and accomplish. So tonight we are grateful, my Father, because we know as we listen to your word, your word is life, your word is power, your word is authority, our lives will never be the same. We thank you, Lord, and we honor you. In the mighty name of our Lord Jesus Christ, we have prayed, and the people of God say, Amen and Amen. So once again, get yourself a Bible. You can read so that when the scripture is read, you compare what we are reading and what the scripture says, and you'll be blessed. People of God, it's my joy and my pleasure to welcome the servant of God, none other but our very own Dr. Reverend Chaplain Edward Karanja. God bless you. The Lord Jesus Christ bless you as we share tonight's message. May his peace rest on you and may he grant you understanding and revelation of his word. We are going to start by reading Revelation chapter 11. We are going to read only one verse. It is concerning the two witnesses. We now know something about them. They are neither Elijah None of them is Moses, none of them is John, none of them is Enoch. We now know that on the basis of what we discussed in the last previous lessons concerning the identity of these two witnesses. They are simply anointed um, men or servants of God who will be raised up uh, at this particular time. Now, I'm going to read Revelation chapter 11. And we'll see what happens in verse 7. Now that we know something about these two witnesses, what happened to them? In verse 7, we read, this is Revelation chapter 11, verse 7. When they finish their testimony, the beast that ascends out of the bottomless pit will make war against them, overcome them and kill them before we go on then we will just look at that particular verse verse 7 now we are told that these two witnesses were doing the business they were given by the Lord God Almighty to do they are uh, they will be uh, testifying during their time now we are given the time they will be testifying. The time they will be giving their uh, message. We are told they will prophesy 
for 1260 days and that is equivalent to three and a half years now this period is the period that is known as the great tribulation the great tribulation is only three and a half years it is a time of great trouble that has never been seen in this world neither will ever uh, will ever be seen again in this world that's how bad it is going to be and these two witnesses will be standing and testifying and prophesying during this difficult time so remember they are ministering during the most difficult time um, during the great tribulation but we also know that they will be protected by the power of God nobody will be able to touch them because as we learned last time they have fire power now so they, they are permitted to testify to witness to prophesy for three and a half years but we are told when they finished the mission they were given by God we are told this in verse 7 that the beast that ascends from the bottomless pit kills them now so we now understand that the work of these two witnesses is done once it is done God permits the beast from the bottomless pit to kill them now before we go on and find out what happened when they were killed we must understand who is this beast who kills them who is the beast who ascends or comes out of the bottomless pit and he comes and he kills these two witnesses who is this beast there are many answers that are debated the debate is continuous and there are books and books that have been written trying to identify who is this beast who ascends or comes up from the bottomless pit and kills these two witnesses there are two main arguments that the beast is the antichrist or for others the beast is satan himself those are the two major arguments that this beast that ascends out of the bottomless pit is either the antichrist or satan himself so what is this beast who is this beast then we need to determine whether indeed this beast who kills these two witnesses is either the antichrist or satan now before we begin to discuss whether the beast is antichrist or satan let's understand this key phrase the bottomless pit the bottomless pit because we are told that this beast ascends it comes out of the bottomless pit now what is the bottomless pit we have discussed this some times ago when we are dealing with the fifth trumpet in chapter 9 of revelation that is when we came across the bottomless pit now basically what is the bottomless pit now the bottomless pit is the prison remember we explained this it is the prison for certain rebel angels who rebelled with satan and these particular angels rebel angels for some reason they are kept in the bottomless pit they cannot get out we are told they are chained in the bottomless pit so they cannot get out and nobody not even satan can get them out the issue is this how come 
this particular rebel angels were kept in the bottomless pit. Why are they imprisoned there? Knowing that Satan rebelled with one third of the angels or the stars. Why this particular rebel angels? Why are they in this particular place called the bottomless pit or the abyss? Why are they there? There has to be a reason. It's not just because they rebelled with the Satan. Otherwise, Satan would also be right there in the bottomless pit because he rebelled. Also, we have demons possessing people today on earth. They are not in the bottomless pit. Why are these particular rebel angels in the bottomless pit? Because they are chained there and they cannot get out. Why are they there? Why did God particularly choose these particular rebel angels to be put into the bottomless pit? So, first of all, the bottomless pit is therefore the dwelling place of these rebel angels who rebelled with the Satan. But in addition to re uh, rebelling with the Satan, they did something else. These particular angels, there is a reason why they are imprisoned in the bottomless pit. I repeat again, if it was just rebellion, then all the one third of the angels should be in the bottomless pit. But we know they are not because we have demons already here on earth every time we are battling with the demons here. So there are demons like the demons Jesus cast out. There are demons that ministers cast out today. But these demons are also rebel angels. But they are not in the bottomless pit. Why? Why are particular angels in the bottomless pit? They all rebelled. Now there is a reason. And the reason is actually given in the book of Genesis chapter 6 verses 1 to 7 Genesis 6 uh, verse 1 to 7 and also the book of Jude it has only one chapter Jude uh, chapter 1 and verse 6 the reason why they are imprisoned is not just because they rebelled with the Satan it is because these particular angels the rebel angels they had sexual um, connections with human beings. They intermarried with human beings. So they had sexual relations with human beings. Now, in, in the, in the uh, spiritual world of God... The spiritual law of God is that angels cannot marry human beings. They cannot have sex uh, relationships with human beings. That is God's law. But these certain demons, they broke it. And when they broke it, Jude actually describes it very well. They left their domain. They left their proper position. It means they are supposed to be angels. They are spirit beings. But they disobeyed God even more than just rebelling against God with Satan. They broke the law of God. Now remember when Jesus was arguing with the Sadducees about resurrection. He said we will be like angels and in, in heaven angels do not marry. But these particular wicked angels, they had sexual relations with human beings. You can read this in Genesis uh, chapter 6 and, one, uh, and verse 1 to 7. And Jude chapter 1 verse uh, 6 talks about it too. The result of, the, of these sexual relations with the human beings is the production of giants. Now these giants are given the name in the Bible the Nephilims. Nephilims. They are giants. Just simply remember, they are giants. Giants' children were produced. When did this happen? 
It happened just before the flood of Noah. And one reason why God brought the flood is because he had to cleanse the earth completely because of this abomination um, uh, done by these angels when they broke the law of God and they had sexual um, relationship with the human beings and then there were giants that were born here. So it is just before Noah's flood and hence the flood, by this flood, God cleansed everything. This is why God destroyed everything. So now you know why these particular rebel angels are in the bottomless pit and why they are not permitted to come out of there. The only time the bottomless pit is opened is in chapter 9, when the fifth trumpet is sounded. And when the fifth trumpet is sounded, we are told an angel is given the key to this bottomless pit. He opens it, and out of the pit comes smoke. And then out of the smoke, locusts. Now, these locusts, as I explained during that topic, they are not natural locusts. They are demon angels. These are the angels we are talking about. These are the angels that are held captive in the bottomless pit. We discussed about this, um, um, this topic when you are discussing uh, chapter 9 about the trumpet. So if you read chapter 9, um, you will find that when the fifth trumpet is sounded, it is that time, for the first time, the bottomless pit is opened. What comes out in the form of this demon locust is actually these rebel angels that made a terrible mistake by having sexual relations with human beings. But here they are in chapter 9. They are released. Now, they are kept there because they are the worst type of demons. So now we know when you talk about the bottomless pit, we know who is there. It is these rebel angels, and they cannot get out. They are bound there until the timing of the Lord. Now, having now known what is it, what is it all about the bottomless pit, just remind yourself, the bottomless pit is where the rebel angels who went farther and disobeyed the law of God and had a relationship with human beings, this is their abode. The, the subject of the bottomless pit are these rebel angels. Now you know who is there in the bottomless pit. Now, it is very important to understand uh, uh, that because now, we can now begin to answer the question, the very first part of the question. The beast who ascends from the bottomless pit, is that beast Antichrist? Let's answer that question first. Because we are told the beast that ascends out of the bottomless pit kills the two witnesses. Now, is that beast the Antichrist? Some people believe it is Antichrist. But is it? The answer is of course obvious. The beast that ascends out of the bottomless pit cannot be Antichrist for various reasons. Number one, there is no scripture in the Bible to support that the Antichrist is a human being, that the Antichrist was ever in the bottomless pit. No scripture tells us that, that the Antichrist was in the bottomless pit. Remember, the bottomless pit, the subject are these demons, these wicked demons. And Antichrist is never mentioned anywhere that he was in the bottomless pit. Secondly, there is no scripture that tells us that Antichrist actually ascended out of the bottomless pit because he was never there. There is no scripture 
to tell us that he ascended out of the bottomless pit. So, the bottomless pit has never been the home of the Antichrist. And we know at the end, when Jesus returns, and he deals with the Antichrist, the Antichrist is not thrown or cast into the bottomless pit. He is cast directly into the lake of fire. So he is never associated with the bottomless pit. He never ascended from that pit because he was never there. That, that's what the scripture uh, shows us. So we therefore know that this beast that ascends out of the bottomless pit is not Antichrist because he was never there. Second part. Is this beast that kills these two witnesses Satan himself? To answer that question, let us ask ourselves one question. Where is Satan at this time? If somebody asked you, where does what Satan dwell? What would you say? Now, we know from scripture that the bottomless pit is certainly, is certainly not the dwelling place of Satan currently. Up to now, the bottomless pit is not where Satan dwells. Please remember that. He is not in the bottomless pit. Remember we are told in the scripture, that Jesus said this, He is the God of this world. How can he be the God of this world if he is in the bottomless pit and he cannot get out? So that is one scripture that tells us, certainly, Satan is not in the bottomless pit. He is the God of this world. Secondly, in the book of Ephesians, he is called the prince of the power of the air. So he cannot be in the bottomless pit if he is the prince of, of the power of the air. He dwells in the heavenly realms, but not in the heaven of God. So we know that Satan currently is not in the bottomless pit. But he dwells somewhere in the heavenlies, but not in the heaven of God. Remember there are three heavens. The first heaven, the second heaven, and the third heaven. The third heaven is the heaven of God. We know Satan is not in the heaven of God. He doesn't dwell there. But he dwells in, in the heavenlies. So he is not in the bottomless pit because I have already given you the scriptures that tell us he is the God of this world, that he is the prince of the power of the, uh, of the air. Uh, this is in the book of Ephesians 6 and verse 12. And Peter, in 1 Peter chapter 5 verse 8, we are told this, that Satan is like a, um, a roaring lion. And that he roams around looking for someone to devour. So how can Satan be looking around for someone to devour if he is in the bottomless pit? That tells you Satan is very much in the world. So he is not in the bottomless pit um, uh, currently. But is there a time when Satan will be in the bottomless pit. Now that is the question. Is there a time? Now, now we know that Satan is free to roam around in the world because he is the God of this world. But is there a time when he will be in the bottomless pit? And the answer is yes. The answer is given in the book of Revelation chapter 20 and verses 1 to 3. This is the time when Jesus establishes his millennial kingdom, a kingdom of uh, 1,000 years. Revelation 20 verses 1 to 3 tells us this, that although Satan is now in the world, just before the start of the millennial reign of Christ, there is another angel who will be sent. And this angel will come with a chain and he will have a key to the bottomless pit. 
And we are told in Revelation 20 verses 1 to 3 that he will take hold of Satan, bite him, and cast him into the bottomless pit. This is in Revelation 20 verses 1 to 3. So we know that Satan at one time before the millennial rule of Christ will be cast into the bottomless pit. And guess what? He will remain there for 1,000 years. Until the 1,000 years are finished, he will remain in the bottomless pit. He will not get out of there during those 1,000 years. And the Bible says that he will not have a chance to deceive the nations anymore. Why? Because he is not in the world. He will be in the bottomless pit. Now that we know, scripture tells us that Satan at one time will be cast into the bottomless pit for 1,000 years, then comes the next question. Did he ascend out of the bottomless pit? And the answer is yes. It is given in the same chapter. Chapter 20 of Revelation. And verse 7. This is what we are told in Revelation 20 and verse 7. After the 1000 years are over. Satan is released from the bottomless pit. And because it is a pit he has to ascend. He has to climb out of it. So now we know that Satan at one time will be cast into the bottomless pit for 1,000 years. Then after 1,000 years, the pit is going to be opened, he will be released, and he will ascend out of the bottomless pit. So there is only one personality that comes out of the bottomless pit, and that is Satan. That answers the question, who is who will kill these two witnesses? It is, of course, Satan. He may use the Antichrist, but he is the beast that ascends out of the bottomless pit after the 1,000 years. This is the beast that ascends out of the bottomless pit. So now we have answered an important question that has been asked by many people. Who actually will kill these two witnesses? It is not Antichrist. He may be used by Satan, but the beast that kills them will have to ascend. It is a beast that ascends out of the bottomless pit, and this is the only creature that ascends out of the bottomless pit. He is the beast. Remember, others are not called the beast. The, uh, the other angels are not called the beast. But we know there are three beasts that are mentioned in the Bible, in the book of Revelation. One beast is Satan, the other one is Antichrist, and the other one is the false prophet. We will talk about that when we reach there. But for now, this particular beast, the name beast tells you this is not just an ordinary angel. The only beast that ascends and will ascend out of the bottomless pit is Satan himself. So we have solved that riddle as to who is going to kill these two witnesses. Now, you do notice that Satan is able, or rather um, permitted by the Lord, to kill these two witnesses only after they finish their mission. This is good news. It means nobody can take us out while we are ministering, and as long as our ministry is not yet completed. The Lord will shelter all who are commissioned to minister, all those who are commissioned today to minister, the devil can do nothing about it. Until they finish their mission. This again tells you that God is in control. Satan has no control over our lives at all. So that is an, an important indication that God is sovereign all the time. Now, that is where we have started with this topic of the death of the two witnesses. Now we know the killer. And we know why he is ascending out of the bottomless pit. 
what we are going to do next Wednesday is now to look at the death, the actual death of these two witnesses and what happened when they will be killed because a lot is going to take place after they are killed. So, God willing, we will discuss the actual death of these two witnesses, having understood who is going to kill them. It is the Antichrist himself. And with that word, I pray that the Lord will continue to review the scriptures to you and make the scriptures alive. Because when the scriptures are alive, we can leave them. It is my prayer that the Lord is going to watch over you. He is going to guard you. And particularly all those who are in specific ministries. I pray that the Lord will continue to sustain you. For no one can cut short your ministry. Also remember that every believer he is commissioned to minister to others. Because we have one general commission. To win people for Christ. And you do not need to be appointed as a preacher or evangelist or anything. We have the commission to live a life that is like a light. Because we are called the light of the world. So every believer remember you are the light of the world. And the light can only be seen when you live a godly life. So may the Lord bless you, may the Lord keep you until we meet next Wednesday. It is in Jesus' name I have prayed. Amen.